Okay, so let's do this. I was going to do a little more research before I started this one, but every time I think about it, I don't do it. And then I keep putting it off. So let me just do it now. Donald Trump. I'm doing it now at the risk of getting so much stuff wrong. <laughs> Donald Trump is being compared in the evangelical community to King Cyrus, who is in the Bible. This is the part I was going to look at, because I'm not familiar with that story. But basically, he liberated the Jews. He made their land great again. Inadvertently, mind you. He was there doing something else and then by accident liberated them. So, what I want to know. And let's do it. Is he King Cyrus? Is he the liberator? Or is he Jim Jones? Jim Jones is a cult leader. For those who don't know, if you ever heard the expression, don't drink the Kool-Aid, that's where it comes from. Jim Jones ran a cult where almost a thousand people died because they drunk flavor aid. It was flavor aid, not Kool-Aid, but same thing, sort of. Flavor aid, and it had cyanide in it. And they all died. Like 918 people, I think it was. 304 of which were children. So, what I want to know is, is Trump King Cyrus the Liberator? Or Jim Jones the cult leader? Which is he most like? Now, people who don't like him may say he's the cult leader. But people who do like him are saying he's Cyrus. Like they're saying it. They're not, this is not, they might say it. No, they're saying it. He's the blessed one. And no, he is not the Antichrist. The Antichrist is supposed to be a wonderful person. This is a person who is supposed to convince you that he's Jesus. So he is supposed to be loving and kind. He is supposed to be a person who is a false Christ. And so he is supposed to, you know, come in and convince everyone, at least 99% of us, that he is an awesome person. And then he wreaks havoc. Donald Trump cannot be the Antichrist just by definition. Nobody likes him. So, King Cyrus or Jim Jones. Potency, just reward, agency, beauty, and compassion. Jim Jones was operating under the guise of compassion. That's how he first got the people to follow him, and then he tortured them. Okay. Brian the Cage, Obsession and Anger in Chains. That's limiting one's options. Is what obsession is. Brian in a cage, living in a constant tomorrow. Anger and chains is breaking free, forcefully. Okay. Self-love, hunger, and nourishment. Oh, good Jesus in the morning. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
There was a lot of abuse. I mean, he loved himself. He did kill himself, they say. He was found on the floor with his head on a pillow with a hole in his head. Estibus, such laugh and hod. Divination, verdancy, and submission. This to us is about um, divination. This is about spirits and communing with the spirits. And this was a religious cult. He was a preacher. Um, Jim Jones. Such life, verdancy. This is life, abundance, abundance of life. And then hard is submission. This is beseeching the heavens, asking for help. Go the distance, all that glitters in Treasure Island. Go the distance is about endurance, all that glitters is about false things or things that appear to be something they're not. And Treasure Island is about abundance, gifts, things. Yeah. More Jim, more, more Jim Jones than King Cyrus. This is not a liberation. It's an enslavement. Because what is here is actually false. Because a lot of this described Jim Jones, and I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about Trump. But Trump is a false narrative. He is a person who is supposed to be seen on, on one side as getting messages from the Lord. This is a person who is supposed to be adding new life to them, beseeching, talking, giving, submitting to. Self-love, I mean, that's pretty much, duh. Nourishment and hunger. He is feeding their need for racism and hatred. Bride in a cage. This is this is goes right along with limiting the options and we're trying to break free. We're trying to break free of the status quo of the yesteryear being gone. There is a magnetism that goes with him. They are attracted to him because he is very shining. Don't drink the flavor aid. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. They already have. Is Donald Trump good for America? Emperor. Fourth cup, six of cups. There is a um, good for America, no, but there is a need for him. Because there is something that needs to be righted. There's something that needs to be corrected. This is about the past. This is the complacency. This is the lackadaisical way we go about things. He has to threaten with power. He has to threaten to be in power forever. Like a Jim Jones. He has to be our burden. 
so that your society can heal, believe it or not, and not take what you have for granted. Not only that, he is supposed to be a warning to the rest of the world. Those in Germany, those in Russia, those in Australia, those in Canada, those in Mexico, those in Europe, those in Asian countries, South Korea and North Korea, Taiwan. He is supposed to be the warning that this is what happens when you ignore what's in your Kool-Aid. It's like he, he's just... And he's the perfect example because everybody pays all the attention in the world to him. So now that you see him, as I've always said, when you become aware, you become responsible. You see him. Now you must act. 